What's up guys, it's Joe from GadgetryTech.com and today we're reviewing the Sabrent USB 3.2 tool-free external enclosure for NVMe SSDs. I say tool-free and we're going to stress that in a moment by showing you just how simple it is to install an NVMe SSD. Uh, but before we get into that, let's talk about the basics. This is available in silver and black right now. It has the MSRP of $89.99. However, I found it on Amazon for $45 in both colors. Um, it comes with USB-C and USB-C to A cables. So if you have a laptop that's uh, Mac or Windows or desktop that has USB-C or A, you can choose either one and they'll both work full speed. Uh, the USB 3.2 Gen 1 is important because NVMe memory is extremely fast and if you don't have a good memory controller on an external box like this, your performance can be halved. Literally a USB Gen 1 will do uh, roughly 500, just over 500 megabytes per second. This can support a full gigabyte per second byte, which, you know, it's just under 10,000 megabits per second. So that's pretty amazing. Um, it's solid aluminum, it weighs 7.2 ounces. So by being almost half a pound of solid aluminum, it doesn't need any fan. Um, it'll naturally pull heat away from the SSD and that heat dissipation is important for reliability. And because it doesn't have a fan, you don't have to worry about noise or anything failing. Uh, so with that being said, we're going to do a quick demonstration of just how easy it is to install the NVMe memory and then we'll do some benchmarks and talk about stability and performance. Okay, so to install the SSD, we're going to turn the enclosure over and that's going to expose this little key ring here. We're going to lift that up, turn it counterclockwise a quarter turn and you will see the inside. Now this is thermal uh, tape. It can be a little bit tacky once you remove the protective film, which you need to do before you use this for an SSD. Um, so I would not recommend laying this um, that side down on the table. So we're going to install the SSD and before we do that, this is the magnetic uh, key or magnetic screw if you will. That will secure the SSD into the case. Um, so that's part of the tool free process. So we'll put the SSD in. Let's put this screw in on the end here where a normal screw would go. That magnetic screw is there. I'm going to lower it in and look at that piece of cake. So I didn't use a single tool. Now I already removed the protective film so all I have to do is put this, oops, let's turn it around, put this back in, we're gonna tighten the key ring, and I am good to go. It's that simple, guys, and we are done. Okay, so it's that easy to install the NVMe memory. Again, no tools, it has that magnetic screw, which is awesome, it just makes things painless. Uh, so the reason why you would get something like this is if you have a computer that had a, a, a failed hardware on it, you know, the motherboard failed, CPU is not booting up, whatever it is, you want to build a new computer, usually that means you have to reinstall Windows. However, you don't want to lose the data off your NVMe memory from the prior machine. This is a perfect solution for that because you can take that NVMe SSD out of your old uh, rig that failed, put it in this enclosure, and then copy the contents that are important on another machine and back up everything that's important to you. The other option is if you bought a couple NVMe SSDs and you have an extra one, or you had a smaller one and you upgraded but you want to still get some use out of it, buy this enclosure and now you have a really fast external SSD. That's great for work like video production, if you want to plug this into a console to get faster load times. There's a lot of versatility with this. It will work on Xbox, by the way, I confirm that. I have an Xbox One X. This is as of January 2020 uh, and it works fine. So um, Mac, Windows, and whatever can support the USB interface provided the hardware is acceptable. It will downclock all the way to USB 2.0 uh, if you just need to read data and don't need the performance. Uh, so speaking of performance, this has a J Micron. Um, it's the JMS583 chip. I wanted to point that out because the 5.3 chip, basically it's one of the few that natively support NVMe SSD on the market. So a lot of external enclosures use the same chip. Um, on the PCIe side, it's uh, PCIe Gen 3 uh, times 2. Um, basically, it'll support the full speed of NVMe uh, beyond what the USB interface is capable of doing. So it's a pretty reliable chip. It does do full trim pass-through, which is super important with SSDs. For those of you who don't know, trim basically allows the operating system to tell the SSD what blocks are safe to erase or no longer being used. Um, it just helps maintain the longevity of the SSD. Some cheap controllers may not communicate that well with the computer because the computer doesn't know what kind of drive is on the other end of the memory controller. So that J Micron chip doing the full pass through is really important. When plugged into the computer and doing the, um, the test, if you will, for under defragment to see if it detects as an SSD, it does. 
Um, I put this SSD under full load for an extended period of time. Basically, we were just hammering it with sequential and random writes. And after about 20 minutes in, the temps uh, stay between 44 and 45 degrees Celsius. Um, Speed-wise was excellent. Uh, I got over 980 megabytes per second on the writes, which is phenomenal. I mean, that, that's as fast as the USB interface can get. I mean, you might get just over 1,000, but um, in real-world use, anywhere from 950 to 1100. You're not gonna notice a difference. Um, so this really gets you the full potential of what USB 3.1 Gen 2 is capable of, um, which is great. Uh, it's been stable. I've used it as a scratch disk for media uh, and took the gamble on it. Basically, I had a lot of media uh, reads and writes going for video production just to see um, if I had any data loss or corrupted data transfer, it would crash the program, obviously. You'd have some problems with the video. I didn't have any problems there, so it's been super reliable. I have seen some complaints online about that because this aluminum is so thick, they say that the USB-C uh, cable doesn't go in far enough. It keeps it from getting a full connection. Um, I didn't find that to be true because I actually removed the circuit board uh, out of the enclosure and plugged the same USB cable in, and they designed the port to not require it to go all the way. Basically, it still connects far enough in um, to make a solid connection and it forces a gap that would have been there with the case anyway, if that makes sense. So whether the case is there or not, the USB-C cable did not go in any further and I never had random problems with disconnects. Um, if you have any issues with performance or stability, it might be the USB controller on your machine it might not be compatible uh, with this memory controller. That happens with everything. Um, so maybe try a different USB port. I only had one port on this rig um, next to me uh, that was using the USB 3.1 Gen 2 on the USB A side. I had some stability issues there, but again, that's, I believe, the controller not playing well with the chip. It's not really a fault of the enclosure, it's just the way things are. Uh, I switched to USB C and I had no problems at all. The regular USB 3.0 Gen 1s uh, work fine too. So, um, and I got the speeds of 500 megabits per second instead of 1,000. So, Anyway, um, the performance has been great. It's been reliable. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. So um, there's really no uh, hidden surprises, I guess. Uh, as far as NVMe goes, you can do 2230 all the way to 2280, which is 80 millimeter long NVMe SSDs. So um, you really have a wide range of support. Overall, I think it's a great product. Again, I'm a big fan of reliability and build quality and the fact that this doesn't have a fan or some funky design that makes it hard to install. It's a magnet. Magnets don't strip. You gotta keep that in mind. Sometimes when you get little enclosures like this, they have one tiny screw. And if you strip that screw uh, or the screw hole that it goes into, because you're constantly switching SSDs in and out or messing with it, that enclosure becomes essentially useless. Um, so I love that it's magnetic. That actually is kind of a selling point because they don't fail over time. Uh, and again, it's a clean design. It's got some weight to it. I like that you get both cables in the box. So overall, it's a recommended product. Again, it's $45. It gives you a lot of versatility with NVMe memory if you can't put it on a motherboard. Hopefully you find a use case for it. If you guys have any questions, please shoot me a comment below. I'll be happy to answer them for you. And I hope you found this review helpful. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time. Bye.